Hello guys, so we are now in Crypto Pagamas uh, with uh, Brian Pellegrino, the founder of Layer Zero. It's uh, already crypto unicorn valued at $1 billion and omni-chain, cross-chain uh, protocol. Nice to meet you here, Brian. Thanks so much, same. So can you tell us about your journey in, in crypto? How did you get into industry? From what did you start? <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a long journey. So I've been in crypto since 2013, originally mining, mm -hmm. doing everything. My background, very briefly, is computer science, professional poker player, started a company, sold it, wrote machine learning models, sold them, started another company, sold it, did AI work, uh, and then now here doing this. But like I've been in the space for a very long time and like uh, basically full time since end of 2016. Uh, it's interesting about professional poker player because I see some other people from crypto industry switching from poker <laughs> to crypto, like for example, Hasib Qureshi uh, as a partner of Dragonfly. Yep, yeah. Uh, in 2011, online poker got banned in the US. Mm -hmm. And so all the like big sites left and all the small sites, all the payment processes were banned. Skrill and money bookers and all of these things. And so they all just started to accept uh, Bitcoin as like a way to basically still play on these websites. Mm -hmm. So all of the poker industry got exposure very, very early on, like 2010, 2011. That's interesting. So uh, did, you, uh, did it show you the problem which you need to solve? Uh, no, not back then. I actually didn't even touch it till 2013 because I like when poker got banned, I started a company instead of mm -hmm. keeping to play. But like uh, so many people just got into it and really dove mm -hmm. in right then. And what was your first company? In which projects? First involved? company was a uh, daily fantasy sports site. So like DraftKings, FanDuel started very similar mm -hmm. time to them, like right as that industry was going through massive expansion. And so can you tell how, do, how did the idea of starting Layer Zero come to you? Yeah, it was uh, back like 15, 16 months ago, like every day you were just getting articles like Binance Smart Chain has more mm -hmm. volume than all of Ethereum, like so much activity is here. And it was the first time that there was any meaningful volume on like any other chain. Mm -hmm. Uh, so me and my two co-founders, like, we just designed a very simple game. Like, oh, let's see, you know, what you could do between these. And I realized like, Without some central, like, central coordinator, you can't even make these two things interact or do anything. Mm -hmm. But we knew bridges existed. So we're like, how do those work? Uh, looked into those and we we're just like, whoa, like, <laughs> we would not trust these with like, any amount of money. So we switched from a game to starting working on a bridge, mm -hmm. built a bridge that we thought was pretty interesting, but very quickly realized like, the underlying transport layer, because we still needed to invent a transport mm -hmm. layer to like, talk between, that was the interesting problem. Like, that was a really generalizable thing, and then we just have been on that ever since. And in what do you see the problem of other bridges? Uh, what are competitive advantages of Layer Zero? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, a bunch of things. I think one of the broadest is that every, almost every other bridge works is like there's some centralized system in the middle, whether it's mm -hmm. 19 guardians or whether it's your own chain or whatever it is. And if that consensus mechanism fails for even a very short period, it can just arbitrarily write messages to everything. Every mm -hmm. single one more or less is a central point of failure. And we thought that was like a huge issue because what it means is that fundamentally the bridge, the mechanism sitting in the middle needs to be more secure than all value in transacting mm -hmm. between all chains. And that has just never proven to be the case. Like the hub and spoke model has been tried many, many, many times and just never even come close to that. It would be super capital inefficient if you're doing a bonded value system. Mm -hmm. uh, so our approach was really like to fundamentally change that into shard risk and, and move more autonomy into the applications themselves. And in which chains uh, do you see the most activity of the users? Uh, I think it's reasonably balanced right now. Uh, definitely uh, Avalanche has a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Polygon and Phantom have a fair amount. Ethereum, of course. Uh, I think the Layer 2s are, are starting to get a little bit more BSC. Uh, our BNB chain now has quite a bit as well. Um, so there's like the seven run, right? Is ETH, BNB chain, uh, AVAX, Phantom, Polygon, Arbitrum, mm -hmm. and Optimism. Uh, but we're going to be on Solana shortly, Terra, Flow, uh, yeah bunch of others. And do you have any personal uh, preferences as for the chains on which you are bullish on? Uh, I mean, as like, I think a lot about consumer experience, so like mm -hmm. things that people are building. Uh, obviously chains with uh, faster finality are like nice uh, mm -hmm. to have, uh, so it's attractive. So like coming in and out of Avalanche uh, is really, really nice. Um, whereas chains with longer finality is a bit trickier to design around something. Uh, but security obviously comes first above everything mm -hmm. else. Um, so I still do most of what I do on Ethereum, uh, but I think it's a mix. 
uh, like just purely on Ethereum or you use Polygon, Arbitrum? No, I mean, I use everything, but like 90, 90, yeah, 90% of what I interact with mm -hmm. daily is on ETH. Um, but to be fair, if I was dealing with much smaller amounts, I would almost mm -hmm. certainly move to some other chain. So. Yeah, it's understandable. And so what are the most exciting use cases for you uh, on layer zero? For me, a uh, huge amount of interesting things in gaming and NFTs right now, but mm -hmm. I think by far the most interesting is uh, cross-chain collateralization. So lend and borrow systems where you collateralize on a chain and borrow against it on another mm -hmm. chain heavily removes the need for wrapped assets and uh, just a massive unlock within the industry. Uh, and as well, you have on your avatar NFT. Can you tell more about that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so originally, actually, me and my two co-founders had uh, uh, three crypto punks. So I've always mm -hmm. like uh, kind of managed our little portfolio for the three of us. Mm -hmm. And so when I sold the punks, my co-founders were so upset with me, uh, <laughs> which looking back, we sold it at like a great time. So they should be thanking me, but they were, they were so upset with me. They said, we have to adopt something <laughs> else. So penguins was like the thing that we did. Mm. Um, yeah. Nice. And did you get into CryptoPunks early? Or uh, no? I mean, not 2017 early, but like, yeah, re I mean, relatively, I would guess on a pricing basis. Yeah. And do you have any other NFTs to collect? Way them? too many uh, at this point. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I like broadly to just play around with everything. I think mm -hmm. you have to, uh, to kind of know what's being built and what's useful and not. Mm -hmm. uh, so I look at everything and still play with everything quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, what are the most uh, cool other ones, except the penguins? Uh, I mean, I, I like Fidenzas. I think Fidenzas are uh, awesome. Um, what else do I really like? Um, I don't know if there's anything that I love, love for like super long term. Uh, I think there's a couple of cool things, but yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. And so do you have like a collector mindset or you just like it's from experimental point of view or do you ex uh, expect some huge returns from those NFTs? Uh, I mean, fortunately from being early, like we saw some pretty reasonable returns, but I think mm. I personally have like a super skew towards collector. Uh, just uh, growing up as a kid, like I always loved that, but I don't think most NFTs are like properly positioned for that right now. Most of them are just like, buy a single thing or a collection of things because you plan on saying there isn't really like there's no i guess what drives me is like completionism right mm -hmm. um you collected pokemon kids as a card you would like try to get all the hollows or something that just like mm -hmm. doesn't exist in the space now um but i think broadly i'm kind of drawn to that <laughs> and as well can you tell us about the launch of stargate yeah yeah uh stargate was super interesting so launch layer zero five weeks ago now five mm -hmm. or six weeks ago stargate two days after attracted four billion in tvl in like the first two weeks uh i think at the time it made it like the fastest growing d5 protocol ever so it was just it was just crazy i mean we we obviously were super excited about the idea super excited to be like launching layer zero with like this flagship thing on top that can do huge unlocks we got the sushi integration uh they voted it through like super early so broadly we were excited but like had you know certainly didn't expect that big of a response mm -hmm. so it was just awesome and so uh, where do you see the development of DeFi space? Yeah, uh, I think right now, I mean, obviously we think of things through like the lens of how will all these things exist across multiple mm -hmm. chains. And I think you have this stuff where you have Uniswap or whoever it is, right? And like nobody likes to just be living on one chain and like watching mm -hmm. all of these other DEXs pop up and like take up all the TVL, mm -hmm. all the volume, all of everything, right? So like everybody want, everybody is thinking towards SU. How mm -hmm. do I go everywhere? What is the mechanism for doing this? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I think like stables will be a pretty big sticking point. I think lend and borrow will be DEXs for sure. Like all of this stuff, it is very top of mind for all of them. And mm -hmm. uh, we're just trying to help them make it as easy as possible. And do you plan to do anything with ZK rollups as well? Yeah, hundred percent. So we're following super, super, super closely. Uh, Layer zero was built in mind that even the mechanism we described in the paper is a single validation library, mm -hmm. but they can be many, many. Uh, so if state proof generation speeds up like a thousand X tomorrow, we'll absolutely be migrating a library to that that anybody can point to. So super excited about the ZKs uh, in a couple different areas. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're watching very closely and like have mm -hmm. a small team researching uh, kind of in the forefront of it. And can you share some more plans for the development of Layer Zero? Do you have any exciting partnerships in place? 
tons of exciting partnerships, not many that I can announce, but like you'll see them all in the next six to 12 weeks. Uh, and then just a bunch of new chains. So like I said, Solana soon, Terra mm -hmm. soon, Flow soon, all the others. Cool, we'll follow that. And so the last question, can you share some old coin picks for, for uh, Um I was, I was just complaining to somebody about this. Like 2013 onwards, I was excited about a lot of things just all the mm -hmm. time. There's always a super exciting stuff. And in the last 18 months, I haven't been, like there's been nothing that's gotten me super excited uh, other than the thing that we've been working on. I know people who are really excited about Celestia. I know people are really excited about like a couple of other things that are emerging, uh, but I haven't found anything that like I am just like, that you know, I feel super pumped about. So I just have nothing right now. <laughs> Do you plan to launch your own token for layer zero? Uh, We'll see, uh, you know, definitely the potential. I think there's been plenty of sleuths who have poked around the contracts and like mm -hmm. found some, some breadcrumbs and stuff. But for now, we're pretty content with how things are. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for such interesting conversation. Of course, yeah, thanks so much.